So let me introduce myself first. My name is Dr. Lefkais Petla Mazoglu. Uh, and tonight we're going to talk about the counseling degrees that we have here um, in the Faculty of Education at Monash University and some of the career out outcomes related to, uh, to that. So um, give me a second. There you go. Before we get started, I, want, I would like to acknowledge the lands on which we speak today. Uh, and acknowledge also that sovereignty was never ceded. Specifically, we'd like to acknowledge that the Wurundjeri and Bunurum people, communities of the Kulin Nations, are the ongoing custodians of the lands on which Monash University now stands and on which most of our campuses are based. We pay our respects through our research, our teaching and learning to the Wurundjeri and Bunurum elders and the past, present and future communities. So, as I said earlier, my name is Dr. Lefteris Patla Mazoglu. Uh, I am the course leader of the Graduate Certificate of Counselling and also the Master of Counselling. So, I'm going to touch on both courses today. But before I do that, I would like to speak broadly about counselling. So, first of all, why study counselling? So, and why you're in the right place to study counselling as well. So, um, a career in counselling is has been probably the most rewarding aspect of my life, I should say. It is it has allowed me to uh, to connect with people, to practice uh, a number of skills, and grow myself uh, as a person, both professionally and personally as well. Um, and as counsellors, we work in a variety of settings. So we we support people um, with vocational, relationships, social and educational difficulties and mental health issues more broadly and well-being issues more broadly. So you can see here, counsellors, it's, it's a great profession. As you can see, it's a very noble profession uh, because it helps people reduce suffering um, as well as provide skills um, for ongoing coping with um, not just the problems uh, with which people come to counselling, but also to skills that they can, that clients can um, transfer or apply to other areas of their lives so that they can uh, reduce suffering, as we said earlier, or improve their overall well being uh, and thrive. So it is not only um, symptom reduction focused, but also promoting positive living. So both ends of the spectrum that relates to well-being. Um, so we do um, support people to change their lives and we help them uh, become more hopeful about the future and, um, and the world around them. So as I said earlier, it's a very noble profession. Uh, it's a profession that helps people um, to uh, broadly, as I said, with the lives. Um, and it's something that we, uh, that, you know, although clients tend to come, to come into counseling thinking that, oh, you know, I've got this one problem in my life that I need to solve, then I'll be a better human. Um, they, they usually take a lot more than that. They, they get to explore themselves, to, um, to increase uh, or to gain some personal growth um, and to, um, to gain some some benefits uh, that they can apply other areas, areas of their lives. So um, if we look at the job outlook, most recent data, we'll see that it's a growing profession in Australia, the counselling profession. So at the moment we see around 38 or more than 38,000 people employed as counsellors. I do believe that's, that includes other types of counsellors like financial counsellors probably too. So it can be a bit misleading that that specific number, but the rest is very telling um, of the growth of counselling. So um, we, we see here that most, uh, that, that, yeah, that mostly uh, the weekly earnings of a counsellor, of a professional counsellor are uh, above the average of the weekly earnings of uh, around uh, across professions. Um, some professionals, sorry, some counsellors will work part-time and some full-time. Um, and I think this is also, also because many counsellors will work part-time in two different, or more than, let me say, sometimes three different settings, uh, which, which is great to keep a balance and to, um, uh, to ensure that things never get boring, I guess. <clears throat> so our philosophy specifically in the counselling courses is that counselling is the confidential collaboration between 
us as, as qualified counselors and the clients who come in to meet us. So we use evidence-based uh, practice to address the concerns we have identified and to, as, as I was saying earlier, to support people, enhance the self-understanding and promote their mental health and well-being. Um, so we have the expectation that upon completion of the courses, uh, you'll be competent and ethical professionals and you'll be committed to theory and practice of counselling across the lifespan. So I keep saying across the lifespan because we do have units that focus on learning counselling skills and adapting counselling to support um, people from, from a younger age, from, uh, from being children, to uh, older adults as well. And out of this, I do want to highlight the, the, the part that focuses on evidence-informed practice. So all our uh, lecturers here at Monash University are very experienced counsellors and or psychologists. So our teaching focuses around um, our own expertise, our own professional insights as well. So we do use evidence evidence that we gather from the literature, from research, from our own research and the research that we found internationally, but at the same time we complement this with uh, evidence from our own practice. We bring, bring our own case studies, we discuss anecdotes um, and certain scenarios and case studies, as I said, from, um, from our own experience uh, because we want to we wanna give you a real life experience and, and all of our teaching oh, focuses on learning the theory and then putting the theory into practice. So it's very hands-on. Um, uh, our courses are very hands-on. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit more specifically about the grad cert of counselling. So the grad cert of counselling is an introductory course. It's If you were to study full-time, it's one semester or part-time two semesters. Um, uh, and you have the option to study online, fully online, or um, uh, or in person um, at the Clayton campus. That's, that's, that depends on your enrollment, um, obviously. So this course provides you with uh, foundational knowledge of theory, concepts, principles, issues, and contexts re related to uh, being a counselor. And some basic um, skills to prepare you to, to, um, to introduce you to the counseling profession. So uh, if you apply for this course, um, the applications will be uh, assessed after the closing date, which is um, coming uh, in about a month, so toward the end of April, the 21st of April. Uh, so we have, I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about the units included in this course in um, probably a couple of slides. Before I get into that, I want to share with you a little bit about the Master of Counselling. So the Master of Counselling, if you were to study full time, it's a two year course. If you study part time, uh, it can be up to four years, um, but keep in mind that uh, I say full time. If you that's if you don't receive any credit for prior um, study or prior experience, so um, I will discuss this with you in a little bit. But basically, depending on your previous studies, whether you have an undergrad degree or a, or a grad degree in counselling, psychology, or social work, um, then uh, you may receive credit for a part of the course for a semester or so um, that's why it says one one and a half or two years of study um, and if you have um, qualifications as well as professional experience uh, of usually a couple of years that relates to counseling so around counseling psychology or social work um, then uh, you may receive credit for another semester so in that case then you may only study the uh, two to the one year course so everybody who studies the course um, is provided with advanced counselling knowledge and skills. So very practical experience. We have 200 hours of, of uh, placement included. Uh, that's compulsory for everyone in the course. Um, and uh, this course is accredited by the peak counselling associations in Australia. So the ACA and PACVA and also in Singapore. Um, if we decide to move to Singapore after the course, uh, know that the course is accredited by um, the Singapore Association of Counseling as well, SAQ. And the same application process applies, um, so applications are assessed after uh, the 21st of April. So those are the career outcomes uh, of the Grad Cert and the Master of Counseling. So you'll see here that the Grad Cert focuses, as I said, on equipping 
you with foundational knowledge. So students may move on after the grad set, they may move on to the master of counseling, or they may be able to apply the knowledge that they learn in the grad set of counseling in the professions more broadly. So we've had a few graduates or a few students, in fact, of um, the grad set of counseling who just wanted to you know, brush up on the counseling skills because they were working as teachers or because they were working in HR or they were working um, as social workers or counselors who wanted to just brush up on the skills, as I said. Uh, but many of, of our counseling or our grad cert students move on to um, the Master of Counseling. So the Master of Counseling equips you with the more hands-on practical knowledge um, and uh, equips you to work in a variety of fields, including careers counselling, education, children and family services, health policy, family counselling, private practice, hospitals, clinics, rehabilitation, and so on. The possibilities are endless. It's a very, it opens up lots of doors, especially the mass of counselling. <clears throat> so what I want to do next um, is I want to uh, talk to you about the um, the structure of the courses. So I know this seems like there's a lot of information on this slide, but I'll go through it slowly. So you'll see there's three parts of the units, part A, B and C. So um, part A, the orientation to counselling, uh, consists of four six credit point units. And these four units comprise the graduate certificate of counselling. I guess you might as well Know that the, the part A equals the uh, the grad set of counselling. Okay, so um, you'll see that there is um, four introductory units, including lifespan development, um, counselling for change and transition, where we learn about mental health issues like depression, anxiety, stress, and so on. Um, and then a brief introduction to ethics, which is very important. Uh, and there's some foundational knowledge around evidence-based practice in counseling. So some micro-counseling skills around empathy and building a relationship and so on. So um, those of you who move on to the Master of Counseling or who study the Master of Counseling, will uh, all of you will study Part B, so uh, which is the expert studies in counseling. Um, and some of you may also study Part A and Part C as well as Part B. So um, Part A, as I say, is the, the grad set of counselling. Uh, and then if you have received credit for one semester of the course, you will receive credit for part A. If you have received credit for two semesters, you will receive credit for part A and part B. So you don't need to complete those. But everybody needs to complete part B. It takes one year of full time study to complete part B. So part B, as you see, includes a number of units. So we have CBT, grief and trauma, which is my favorite unit because uh, it's where my expertise is at as well. Um, there's a bit more uh, an advanced unit around counseling, sorry, about ethics, I should say. And there is also um, other areas of counseling, so sub-contemporary counseling approaches, um, where you learn humanistic uh, narrative, single focus or single session therapies, a number of different therapies that you can um, incorporate in your toolbox as counselors. Um, and then you can you will learn about working with um, groups, families, and couples, and you will start to develop your own identity as a counselor as well. Um, and of course, placement is compulsory. That's why you have to complete. Um, 200 hours of placement during placement A and placement B units. You're supervised during those two units. So um, you have a supervisor either from the setting where you complete your counseling placement or from Monash University, you may be appointed one. Um, you don't write essays or anything. There's no assignments included in the placement units. Um, it's basically a matter of completing your uh, contact and non-contact hours, being supervised regularly, debriefing with your supervisors and your um, and other people, like maybe managers or other uh, team leaders involved in your placement setting as well. We, there is support around finding a placement. We will offer several opportunities every year for you to find placements. Um, you may do placements in settings such as schools. Um, we have some students doing placements in private practice, and rehabilitation services, um, clinics, 
um, alcohol and drug services, prisons, this is a wide variety of services, community services, many of them as well. Uh, and we'll support you to apply for those placements, uh, to go for the interview that many of them require. Um, and then during placement as well, you'll be supported closely by our team of professional practice um, support. Um, and then part C, that is the specialist counseling studies. Um, the, so the part C will be completed by students who, who are attending the 1.5 year of the Master of Counseling. So those who have only, so all the two years to say, so those who have received credit for one semester or no credit at all. So this is where you learn um, some, how to work with some more specialized um, in more sp specific, I should say, areas. So we're supporting you to work with um, children and adolescents during the school years, uh, learning and career counseling that's across the lifespan as well. Then um, how to support, uh, how to work with people of diverse backgrounds. Another one of my favorite units because and it's also a unit I've developed. Um, so including um, LGBTIQA plus clients, as well as um, First Nations clients, clients with disabilities, um, as well as uh, race, ethnic, uh, and religious background, diverse backgrounds. And then lastly, a unit about uh, working uh, through telehealth and technology, using technology in counselling, which is very 2023. Mm -hmm. um, I should say that all of these units are brand new. They are fresh uh, out of the oven. Uh, this course um, has, has launched this year, basically. Uh, we have revised the course every few years, every, I want to say every five years or so. Uh, all courses at Monash go through a review process. So the last review was quite recently, uh, and the outcome of the review, in, during which we consulted with students and with counselors and with accreditation bodies, um, the outcome of the review was to revise the unit, the course entirely. So this is the revised course. Uh, all the units uh, are designed to meet a contemporary counselor's needs and contem contemporary client's needs as well. Uh, so, it is it is the epitome of um, of counselling as we know it. it. It is the most recent course counselling course in the world world as I say, given that it's you know it just launched now. Um, so this is just a brief overview of um, of the of the units. I do want to briefly mention um, some entry requirements. So first of all, the entry requirements of the grad set of counselling. So you'll see here that we require a bachelor degree in any field. You can have a bachelor degree in, uh, it could be psychology or counselling, it could be accounting, business, teaching, nursing, anything other that you can imagine. Um, but we do require you to have a 60% average in order to get in. It is a competitive uh, course. So if there's more applicants than places available, then we will need to um, rank the, um, the the applications, right? Um, and uh, you need to have an IELTS, unless you have um, other uh, English requirements, um, or you met the English requirements in other ways. Um, IELTS is a requirement with no band lower than seven. Um, the Master of Counselling, so you'll see here there's three different entry points. Uh, we do require you at all entry points to have a bachelor degree in any field with an average of 70%. Okay, so the standard's a bit higher for the Master of Counselling. Again, it's a competitive course, competitive entry, so um, if we have more applicants than places available, then we do rank the applications but they only be over 70. Uh, so depending on, as I said earlier, if you have an undergrad degree in uh, psychology, counseling, or social work, then uh, you will receive credit for one semester. That's when you do the 1.5 year full-time equivalent. And if you have a degree plus some uh, two years relevant professional experience, um, then you will receive credit for one year for two semesters essentially so you will only need to study for one year i have to say that you know although the credit is offered to you if you want to study more because you're interested in advancing further or or you want to study more units 
you don't have to receive the entire credit if you don't want to. So um, in terms of how to apply for either course, so first of all, you need to ensure that you meet the entry requirements. There's a link here that uh, is very easy to find. So if you go to Monitor Education of Future Students, um, then you, you can begin the application online. It's a fully online application. So for semester 2, 2023, the intake closes, oops, no, I think I flicked this case, sorry, uh, slide, sorry. The, uh, the applications close on the 21st of April. So you have, so say, three to four weeks um, before uh, the deadline for you to apply. Uh, after that date, applications will be considered for semester 1, 2024, basically. So do get in early um, so you don't miss out on the deadline. Um, all applications must be, will be assessed and ranked, as I said, after the closing date. It takes about two to three weeks because we have a couple of applications every time. Uh, it takes about two to three weeks to process this uh, and then you receive a response from us. Um, and then at the time uh, that an offer is made to you, that's when you will know at which entry point you can start the master of counseling. So as you can see here, we can't know in advance uh, whether you will be offered credit for uh, half a year or for an entire year of the Master of Counseling based on your qualifications and or professional experience. You will be advised of the outcome upon um, the offer. When you receive the offer, that's where you know how many, uh, yeah, how many semesters you will be studying. So that's basically uh, what I want to cover on my end. Um, we do have uh, an alumna that would like to that I would like you to, to meet as well, um, and uh, her name is Kim. Hi, Kim. Welcome back. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? Good. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for being here as well. Um, it's great to see uh, people who have finished uh, the course coming back to share their insights uh, and their experiences of the course uh, and then uh, their post-course experiences as well. So, Kim, what you would like to share with us? Where do you want to start? you want to talk about the course first? you want to talk about the, uh, your um, experience after the course? It's up to you. Sure. Um... I was very kindly sent, I guess, a little, a bit, a few guidelines before attending this meeting. Um, but really, what made me decide to pursue a career related to counselling was that I've always had an interest in mental health and well-being, um, and I think, like many people here, was looking for a career pathway um, that really enables me to make a meaningful difference to someone, um, someone's life and community and. Um, just be able to contribute um, and make a difference. Um, prior to studying a Master of Counselling, I did a Bachelor's of Psychology at Melbourne Uni um, and chose to pursue further study at Monash. Just I think Monash has a good reputation um, across the world, really. So it's yeah. quite fantastic to be able to study at Monash. Um, what I enjoyed most about the course might differ, just given that it's been through a refresh and it's it's a little bit different now, but I anticipate um, maybe what I have to say is still relevant. Um, I really enjoyed um, having quite lively discussions around ethical conflicts with my course mates um, mm -hmm. and also exploring more between, um, you know, getting to know myself as a, as a person, but also as in my professional identity. Um, what I do now is I work as a social worker within a cancer hospital, primarily seeing mm -hmm. breast cancer patients from the point of diagnosis um, to the point of discharge or when they're ready to leave um, our care. Um, and so I found that the Masters of Counselling married quite nicely with my Bachelor's of Psychology and Masters of Social Work in that. So the skills um, that I learned through this, this course has been really helpful. I'm really pleased to hear this, King. Um, it seems you've, you've taken so much from the course as well. Um, and it's also, uh, you know, as you said, yeah, it has been, the course has been through a refresh recently. Uh, but, you know, the, the philosophy is the same. They, um, and the teaching philosophy is the same as well, in that a lot of the teaching focuses on um, practical experience, 
uh, and, and I'm sure you would have experience that during your ethics unit, which, you know, people think ethics well, must be quite theoretical, but it was quite hands-on, quite practical, isn't it? Um, the ethics, yeah. And um, is, is there anything else we'd like to share from uh, with uh, the people that are here tonight? Uh, also move on to questions, what would you like to do, Kim? Um, I'm quite happy to move on to questions. <laughs> sure, great. So I can see if a few of you are um, uh, have put questions um, down uh, in the Q and A. I can, I guess, uh, what I can do is I can ask you a few things before we move on. Questions from um, uh, the audience. Is it all right? Because I think the the audience then might find this helpful as well. Sure. Yeah. Great. So I want to ask you first: What made you decide to pursue a career in counselling originally? Yeah, so originally um, growing up, I worked or volunteered quite a lot with um, younger children um, experiencing autism spectrum disorder. And that made me really interested in um, not only the individual's well-being, but also the well-being of the family as a whole. Um, so just wanting to learn something that could enable me to make a difference within um you know, a community and within people experiencing um, social issues, mental health issues, um, I guess across everyone's lifespan that there'll be um, an element as well of, of things like grief or trauma. And so wanting to choose a career that would really enable me to make a difference was what prompted me to study the Masters of Counselling. Yeah, and hopefully um, that, that is still your motivation to make a difference to the world. Yeah, I think um, doing a career like this, it's it's very much part of what makes it sustainable in the long run. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, so what did you study uh, before commencing the Master of Counselling, if you don't mind sharing with us? Yeah, so I did a Bachelor's of Psychology at Melbourne Uni. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, many people have uh, undergraduate in psychology, in fact, but um, many people don't as well. Um, you touched on, on why in one earlier. Is there a... Uh, you know, you said the reputation of Monash. Is, is there anything you want to add to this as to why Monash specifically? Um, I think, no, with, with regards to the reputation, it really lends to other things um, with, when you go look for jobs or when you want to do something in the field of research. It's just a name um, and, a, and the connections you have to the rest of your alumni that's really special, I think. So. Yeah, I, I agree. We have great relationships with... Um, uh, the community and the industry out there. So that's why it's easy for us to find placements. Uh, and many of our graduates also end up um, being offered employment in the places where they do placement, which is great for them. It's not so great for us because we need to find other placement opportunities, but this is the growth of the profession. We totally support. Um, so um, you mentioned what you enjoyed about the course. Uh, is there anything else you want to add about your studies or specifically at the moment that you enjoyed? I think the study of counselling, um, it's really applicable across, I guess, not just the field of counselling because you're learning skills on how to work with people and how to communicate. Um, and so even if you don't go into a career that is, I guess, at the end of the day, a professional counsellor in private practice or whatever that looks like, you you come away with skills that are still quite important. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's a good thing to study um, and just to get a bit more insight um, into others and, and yourself really. I'm, I'm glad it is, it is a profession uh, where the um, ongoing uh, personal, professional reflection is required uh, and you get to learn more about yourself and others through that as well. Um, tell us a bit about the timetable if, if you want. So how classes fit around your work-life balance? How was that for you? Yeah, at the time that I did the course, I was a full-time student, um, so doing some volunteer work. But I guess navigating around um, time and course requirements, it's still a skill in terms of your workload and being able to turn in assignments on time and manage those expectations. Um, with regards to things like placement as well, um, I think it's a real benefit in terms of um, for those who are coming out of it straight um, from university or have never worked prior, 
um, it's it's good to learn those skills in terms of workplace interactions and also managing a nine to five um, mm -hmm. job to a certain extent. Yeah, great flexibility as well. And um, you know that many of the lectures are online um, and the tutorials on campus for campus students or online for online students. Uh, there is flexibility as well. We know that most of our students will work during the day or um, will have you know other life commitments in addition to studying. Okay. Uh, so if you could tell us a bit about your placements, where do you complete placements, Kim? Yeah, so I had one placement and that, that was within a primary school. Um, I have a keen interest in working with children, so that was a good fit. Um, my placement was around um, supporting children um, to develop more pro-social behaviours, whether that's things like um, sharing or turn-taking. Um, that was really my placement. I had an external supervisor who was a private psychologist, um, and so I would meet her at her office um, during the time of my placement and had set hours dedicated to that. Um, but it was really good. I really enjoyed my placement. Part of that was um, developing group therapy with, with children um, within school. So that was quite fun. Well, it sounds amazing. It sounds like a great opportunity and very impactful the work that you did. Um, and what about your current work? Are you at Peter, Peter Mac at the moment? Yes. I... Tell us a bit about that. That sounds very exciting. Yeah. So, um, Similar to what I mentioned before, I work with um, breast cancer patients, um, supporting them from the point of diagnosis to the point throughout treatment and then, um, you know, when they're ready to leave our care. Um, in terms of my work, the counselling skills have been really helpful in a sense because we support people from the point of diagnosis, there's often grief associated with that, there's often changes to family associated with that. Um, changes to routine, changes to employment and work and your relationships are also um, impacted by that. So I have found that the Master of Counselling um, has equipped me with a lot more skill in terms of being able to manage that well. Mm. Um, so that's been really useful alongside, you know, the grief. Um, when you work with cancer, it's quite normal and, and quite natural that you see quite a lot of death and dying as well. Mm. So um, managing that has been very helpful, um, as in having the counselling skills has been really helpful to managing that, especially when we do bereavement follow-up. Um, I think the counselling course is, is quite unique um, where it specialises a lot on giving you the opportunity to practice those skills. Um, having done the Master of Social Work as well, that was, I think, one unit on counselling, which I feel for myself, it wasn't enough to properly equip me. So I'm really glad that I had done the Masters of Counselling alongside that. Yeah, I am um, pleased to hear this, um, that you found, you took so much from the course that you were able to apply in, in your current profession and to develop further as well. And then the last question I want to ask you, Kim, thank you, by the way, this is very insightful to hear. Um, are you considering further study? Is there anything else down the track for you or do you think you're done? Oh, <laughs> um, done quite a bit of study. I yeah. would love at some stage to maybe pursue a PhD in trauma, but that's um, really not concrete at the moment. It's yeah. in an ideal world, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. There is, as counsellors, we know that there is a lot, of, a lot of ongoing professional development that we go through anyway. Every year we attend, mm -hmm. you know, professional development around workshops, seminars, conferences, um, our own self-study as well. So, um, I'm not surprised that, you know, that many counsellors will, will want to pursue their own study or, or do, as you said, PhDs. So good luck with that. Thank so, you very much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for, for your insights. It was very um, useful and interesting to hear a bit about your journey and about your, your future aspirations as well. So um, what we can do now is we can move on to questions um, from the people who've joined us here tonight. So um, I know a few of you have posted question in, questions in the Q&A um, and uh, I know many of them have been, have been answered, uh, but also uh, will be answered down the track. So how shall we manage? So 
Oops, hang on, give me a second. Um, okay, so I see um, a few questions that are um, included uh, in the Q&A box that, that have been submitted by you. Um, what I can do is I can answer some of them verbally. Uh, Jennifer, do you want me to, to do that or do you want, or do you want to? Um, yes, please left Terrace, because sure. I've been typing very fast to answer the questions. If you see that I marked questions um, to be answered live, if yep. you can address them, that would be great. Thank you. That's right, I'll do that. Thank you very much for doing that. So I've seen a few questions here. So how counseling degree degrees offer from psychology degrees? Look, counseling degrees in Australia are mainly postgrad degrees. So grad set and um, masters. So, and they focus more on the practice of counseling. So uh, as you see, the master of counseling is two years coursework and placement, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they're, very, they're more practical. You learn more about counseling specifically working one-on-one -on -one or groups or counseling or couples, sorry, groups, couples, families, or individuals to say. Mm -hmm. um, while psychology degrees, um, they also have a research component where you do a thesis uh, and they also have, um, they're focused on uh, diagnosing as well. So these are, these are some of the main differences of, of the courses. In counseling, we don't work so much or at all, in fact, with diagnosing, rather we develop a comprehensive um, evaluation uh, and a case formulation, as we call it, a case formulation of what is going on for the client that is comprehensive of the strengths um, and needs at the same time. Um, and based on that, we develop a treatment plan and apply it. So um, this is the main difference, I should say, of the courses. And the psychology courses, keep in mind, um, they, they are credited by different associations, by the Psychology Board of Australia and others. So, um, they have different requirements about what is taught and what is that's why they have the requirement of the thesis while in counseling thankfully we don't have this requirement at all um someone says i already have a bachelor's degree in psychology great can i work as a counselor without further study look i think can you work is one question another question should you work as a counselor with just an undergrad in psychology um it depends on your level of confidence and, and expertise in that area, obviously. Um, I would be very surprised, in fact, shocked if anyone employed someone as a counsellor who is not registered with an with a, uh, Australian Council Association or PACFA. So uh, either ACA or PACFA. So all jobs that I can think right now in counselling will require um, applicants to be a member of the ASA or PACFA and to do this you need a course in um, counselling, a master degree in fact in counselling. So does professional experience include careers counselling? Yes, it does. There is a careers counselling unit. Now the one is asking, can you register as a counsellor after graduate certificate of counselling? You can't, unfortunately. Um, while you're studying the grad cert of counselling, you can um or, or the master of counseling as well you can register as a student member with the asa or pacfa um, keep in mind the asa or pacfa do not accredit counseling so they do not accredit graduate certificates of counseling they only accredit master courses and above or well, yeah master and phds basically is it very difficult to find a full-time job as a counselor if you only do the grad cert or a grad diploma as opposed to the masters i think i've answered this question already i would say almost impossible. Um, look, you may be able to find other jobs related to counselling, so maybe doing intakes over the phone, or maybe um, as a receptionist or, 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 or admin support in some counselling services. Um, but I shouldn't, you know, I don't think the question should be how difficult it is. The question should be, is what you want to do, you know? It, Working with someone in counselling with just a grad cert, um, I don't know how confident or how um, ready you will feel to start working. You know, when we work in counselling, I'm sure Kim would be able to, to to add to this. We may work with people with some quite 
complex issues, quite severe issues sometimes as well, like Kim mentioned, grief, trauma. Um, and you need to have the expertise to to practice within your competence. So your competence as, as with a grad set of counsel is quite limited. There is still some competence there, although it's quite limited. And do, do you have anything to add to this, Kim? Well, I would also say it always comes to what's in the best interest of the client at the end of the day. Um, so if you are someone with maybe less experience than who's up for a job, again, someone who maybe is a little bit more qualified, then that would be quite challenging. Um, in yeah. a sort of hiring setting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, Thank I also you. think just from the perspective of self-care and burnout and wanting to choose a career that's sustainable, um, going into it with more knowledge and more experience would be beneficial for you um, personally as well if you're considering doing longer studies, if, if that helps. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Thank you for that. Um, Another question from Christina is saying, uh, if taking the course part time, how often is the placement per week? This really depends on the placement setting. Um, so some placement settings will want you to go either once a week or twice a week uh, for a number of weeks or months. So it really depends um, on the, the placement setting where you're at. Uh, whether you can do placement weekends again on weekends, again, that also depends on the setting. Where you're at. Um, sometimes, it, as I said, yeah, it could be once a week or three days a fortnight, something, you know, um, something you can discuss with your setting at that time. Are there units on diverse backgrounds taught by faculty members who belong to these minority communities? Very good question, Ryan. Uh, I like you have your gender pronouns there as well. Um, yes, we, we all our units, as I said, we, we try to, to, to bring our own professional and personal experience as much as possible. So the units are developed by people with expertise in these areas um, and um, by by people who have worked in these areas as well. Um, having developed the, the diversity unit myself, um, I definitely bring a lot of my diversity backgrounds uh, into that as well. And uh, there is that element to, to make, you know, because I've worked I, my PhD and a lot of my research was in diversity as well um, and around gender and, sex, and sexualities and I bring a lot of that into that uh, the unit and all the units that I teach as well uh, although we have a dedicated unit around diversity we we you know we have the diversity and intersectionality lens um, what's the word is uh, informs our practice and our teaching throughout the course uh, do the course administrators have any sense of how politics and policy may impact the role of councillors in the coming years? For example, do you foresee councillors becoming incorporated into the Medicare system? I do see, yes. Look, the ACA that is closely, um, it, what's the word? Um, we closely work with the ACA and PACFA, but especially the ACA. Um, they have been lobbying for the inclusion of um, Councillors into the Medicare system for quite some time, and I think they will achieve it. I don't know when this will be, but I think we're closer than ever uh, to achieving this. In I don't know, in the next, ask me again, in the next five years, and hopefully by the time, hopefully by the time you graduate. Um, but I, I can't promise anything. I'm not. It's not obviously my area to talk to talk about this. Uh, but I do see um, in the not so far future, uh, councillors being included in the Medicare system. Can you talk more about what the career future of counselors? I think I think we've covered this. The career future um, of counselors. I think we've covered it, that counselors work in a range of settings. Um, um, this is a very good question for you, Kim. Probably, if I can ask this to you, right? So, someone is asking: Can you please explain more what makes uh, what is the difference between a counsellor and a social worker? Ah, okay. Not the easiest question to answer. It's quite broad. Mm. I suppose um, it depends on the setting you're working in as a social worker. I work in healthcare, so part of my role is to provide counselling. Um, that is part of my role. It's not my full job scope. Um, the other things I do as a health social worker include discharge planning or um, 
you know, advocacy work for my patients. So it's a little bit different from just counselling, but I do see um, patients on a counselling basis as well, where it's more traditional in a sense that they book in an appointment time with me and we have a counselling session together. Um, and that sits as part of my job scope as a social worker. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That, that is quite a clear answer. Thanks, Kim. Uh, there was another question that uh, Melissa wanted to ask you. What, why, did, why did you choose this course specifically at Monash? I think you've already answered that already. So thank you again for that. There's another question um, regarding the careers in counseling that says, is this program suitable for students who want to switch majors? My undergraduate and postgraduate majors were in finance and I want to study uh, counseling. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, you, you can um, you, you, you can study the Master of Counseling with an undergrad in finance or, or other areas. Employers will not question this specifically. Most, or I should say most, but many students in our course are career changes. Uh, and this is the nature of counseling. Uh, it just shows that it's, it's a conscious decision, it's, it's a mature decision as well, that although the, your undergrad is not necessarily related to counselling, uh, after that you had a passion or you had a, a calling or a, a specific interest in study, studying counselling. So employees, if anything, I think appreciate that. Um, Left areas, I might just yeah. add as well that um, not to discount the soft skills that you have learned from your other um, mm -hmm. experiences because you would have learned I don't know in finance maybe attention to detail or writing mm -hmm. very detailed reports um, and those are things that can um, contribute to your future career as a counsellor um, and because I, I am a strong believer in the fact that the skills that you have obtained to lead you to a certain point are still beneficial and useful. That's such a good point came about the transferable skills yeah um, and we do see that as well in in the course because we have uh, a mix of or people coming with a mix of backgrounds so we see that a lot um there's a, a few other questions that have been answered already there's another one that says are most on-campus subjects run in the evening so um the, the live tutorials are mostly run in the, uh, in the evening, usually 6 to 8 p.m. if you're an on-campus student. Um, Melbourne time, that is, of course. Uh, there are some options for, for students to study during the day, depending on the unit. Um, but yeah, the lectures are usually uh, during the day, but they're also recorded, so you can watch them later if you need. Um, and the tutorials are live, mostly in the evenings. And there's contents uh, via Moodle. Moodle is our learning management system that you can that is self-paced. Every unit has a self-paced has a self-paced and then a, um, what do you call it a, a live content as well. Um, other questions? Can you clarify if studying the grad deep or masters online affects ACL or PAC for accreditation? I have had advice from PAC for that. Hundred forty hours must be face to face. Um, so. Rest assured, the person who is asking the question around accreditation, that the course is accredited by ACA and PACFA. So there's, as long as it's an accredited course officially by, by these bodies, um, there's no concerns around you uh, getting membership with the ACA or PACFA as a student while studying, and then as a counsellor upon completion of the course. Um, uh, what else? I'd be interested in hearing more about how the course would work for online students. So for online students, good question, Jaina. For, um, for online students, uh, the same number of hours, whether you're online or on campus, you study the same number of hours. If you're an online student, you study from home, obviously. Um, so the lectures are online for everyone and the tutorials are online for online students and then on campus for on campus students. Same number of hours across. Um, there is one unit, uh, the contemporary counseling or whatever counseling approaches, I think it's called, um, that uh, requires attendance on campus. So if you're an online student, there will be this one unit in the course where you will need to come in for a three day intensive. Uh, it's usually Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday kind of thing. Uh, and we always plan to make it, it's usually around week four or five of semester one. Uh, and it's before the Easter break, it's not during school term breaks. Um, 
because we take in mind, you know, students may have different needs. And um, did you attend a three-day intensive, Kim, or was it online for you during COVID? You're on mute, by the way. Sorry, my course was pre-COVID, so I attended mm. in person um, for my classes. Oh, great. Yeah. How was it? Yeah, so it was um, interesting. It was, uh, I think, quite a late course. If I recall correctly, it was 6 to 9 p.m. Um, twice a week. So I would take the train to Clayton. Uh, I think, okay, I think. Back again. Yeah. Yeah, things have changed since then. It's yeah, 6 to 8 now. Things are different yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the intensive, uh, because you weren't an online student, obviously you didn't do the intensive, that, that makes sense, um, is only as I said for the um, online students and you do it in place of rather than doing online classes in that unit, you do the, uh, the three day intensive. It's only seven hours over, sorry, seven hours every day for three days. Um, but it, it's great because, you know, you, you need to come to camp. You need to practice those skills uh, in person. It's a great opportunity for, um, to do that. Um, are psychologists the only professionals able to? Are psychologists the only professionals able to conduct testing for various conditions? Can counselors undertake additional training in this area? Says um, another question. Look, um, we do testing in, in counseling. We don't. You know, we still do an assessment to evaluate where the client is at, so we know how to proceed with um, intervention and treatment. Um, but we don't do diagnostic testing, right? Um, we don't, as I said, we don't work from a diagnostic perspective. We work from um, a, a case formulation perspective. Actually, do you want to give some more insights uh, on this scheme around doing assessment and maybe from your yeah. place or your work? Yeah, so one of my, um, I guess, experiences was also working in community health as a generalist counsellor whilst I was doing my social work placement. That was one of my um, placements then. Um, I suppose you work very closely with psychologists in terms of formulating, um, I guess, giving it a professional opinion in terms of um, formulating a diagnosis, but you don't actually um, diagnose people. Um, which I think can be quite positive as well if you have um, individuals who are quite hesitant to actually um, receive a diagnosis for fear of stigma, but they do need someone who understands what they're experiencing. Um, yeah, that can be quite positive, but I think you still form a professional judgment and a professional opinion, and you still, in many cases, work very closely with psychologists as well. Yeah, it's a comprehensive um holistic and collaborative approach um, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah indeed thank you so much so we have another five minutes left so we can uh, probably um answer a few more questions um the three-day intensive i think we've covered this already um is it important to have pack an essay or is one okay i think one of them is okay you don't have to be members with both of them uh most people would be members with the aca and some only with PACFA. The ACA is a much larger association. Um, PACFA is yeah, a, a bit more niche, I should say. Uh, another question for Kim, how many clients would you see on average per day in your workplace? And how is this balanced against record keeping, administration, etc.? Very good question. Oh, <laughs> I think it's quite a, a tricky question to answer. It really depends on the day. Um, probably if it's purely counselling, I would try and limit that to around five, um, just with the toll that it also takes on, on people work in, in the professional seat, um, but also balancing that with record keeping and keeping accurate notes as well. Um, mm. yeah. It's part and parcel of, of every job, I think, is balancing yes. administration with um, all your the rest of your responsibilities. Absolutely. Another question for you, Kim, while you're at it, it's what have, has to do with um, job seeking after completing your master's. So how do you go about it? Um, because this person who's asking this question says, I see that a lot of counselling roles ask for three plus years working experience. Um, so yeah, how do you go about finding a job? How easy was it for you? And yeah, so it, I think job 
hunting is always a bit challenging. I, I suppose I was in a little bit of a different boat with having um, or with pursuing the Masters of Social Work as well that opened a few doors for me. Um, but I think with regards to um, your question, it is a question that is, you know, of course, at the forefront of most people's minds. What I would encourage um, people to do is to look at professional development opportunities that, that are freely available. Um, things like trauma training through the Blue Knot Foundation that's readily accessible, um, or looking at the Australian Centre for Grief and Bereavement to upskill yourself in um, responding to, to people um, experiencing grief or, or bereavements, um, and really looking at what's out there um, from that perspective and taking advantage of what's um, free just to get more knowledge that might, you know, um, sort of help. If you don't have a lot of experience, at least you have an understanding of what's happening and current evidence and evidence-based practice. Um, so, yeah, I would encourage you to, to look at, um, you know, family violence, professional development seminars, grief, lifespan, um, really the areas that are of interest to you, um, and then making connections through attending those professional development seminars as well. Um, speaking with the speakers and asking how they got their start and what else they would recommend for you to look into, um, because I think those things are things you can add on your resume and things that you can speak to. Um, great thanks Kim um let's ask maybe one or two more questions so someone is asking uh what sort of theoretical frameworks inform the master of counseling so we've already mentioned CBT which covers a broad um it's an umbrella term for a broad range of modalities so it includes ACT which is acceptance and commitment therapy CBD, of course, being cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, it also covers narrative therapy. We also cover humanistic um, or person centered therapy as well. Uh, we also cover single session therapy. Um, we cover working with systems, so systemic therapy in terms of um, couples, groups, and families. Uh, what else is there? Uh, this grief theory that uh, a grief and trauma theory that informed the grief and trauma counseling units as well. Um, what can you think of anything else, Kim? I think off the top of my head, that's a few of them. Yeah, I think you've covered most of them. Yeah, yeah. These are the the, the broad range. There's REBT, which is um, a rational, emotive, emotional uh, behavioral therapy as part of the CBT unit. So uh, again, we cover approaches that our staff are experts in, so we can speak from a point of expertise rather than just you know do a lip service basically and just cover them for the sake of covering them um and on that note i think we can wrap things up here um so i really want to thank um first of all you for attending here um today kim um our, your insights have been extremely helpful um I want to thank everybody as well who attended uh, this online. Uh, we're looking forward to your applications. If you have any questions, um, you can see the link. Uh, there's a link here that um, you can um, follow to uh, receive uh, further advice if you need. Um, as I said, keep in mind, 21st of April is the um, the deadline for uh, submitting your applications. Um, I hope we, we hope we've answered many of your questions here tonight uh, and I wish you all the best.